Hello, NEPHEW community, and welcome to today's webinar. September is PKD Awareness Month, and this webinar is being broadcasted as part of a special featured content. Our topic of discussion today is genetic testing in ADPKD, or autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, and we'll be joined by an eminent PKD expert, Dr. Nida Dahl. My name is Dr. Sachin Hazarnis, and I'll be moderating today's discussion. Currently, I am a senior clinical and scientific liaison with Otsuka, but I used to be a PKD researcher myself, so I'm truly honored and excited to have Dr. Dahl with us on this panel. So it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Nira Dahl. Dr. Dahl is currently a clinician educator and a professor of medicine at Yale University School of Medicine section of nephrology. She received her MD and PhD from Tuft University School of Medicine and completed her residency and fellowship at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. She has been instrumental in developing the Yale Inherited Kidney Disease Clinical Program and is the principal investigator for several ongoing clinical trials in ADPKD. She maintains an active ADPKD registry and is involved in research exploring the role of inflammation and fibrosis in the progression of ADPKD. She is also the director of the Yale Nephrology Clinical Trials Program and a member of the Scientific Advisory Board for the PKD Foundation. Welcome, Dr. Dal. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks a lot. As for me, I'm a senior clinical and scientific uh, liaison at OPDC, and uh, I have a PhD in biochemistry and molecular biology from Colorado State University, after which I joined the University of Texas Southwestern Medical School in Dallas to pursue a postdoctoral fellowship in the Department of Nephrology. During this time, I was involved in basic as well as preclinical research on various aspects of polycystic kidney disease, which included the wind signaling pathway. And later on, I focused on the role of microRNAs in disease initiation and progression. I continued working as a research scientist for several years before joining my current position at Otsuka. So with genetic testing for ADPKD on the rise within academic institutions, but more importantly, within the community nephrology setting, there are a lot of unanswered questions regarding the utility and interpretation of these, of these tests and results. So in the next 40 minutes or so, we will cover the following topics. Our objectives for today are, we'll look over or understand the, or Dr. Dahl will give us an overview of ADPKD we will understand when genetic testing is indicated and is most appropriate in ADPKD. We'll also try to understand the different types of molecular genetic tests that are available. Later on, we will focus on the information provided within a clinical genetics report. And then Dr. Dahl will interpret some genetic sequencing results for us. Uh, we will end with the role of genetic counseling, and then we'll just focus on some key takeaways. So Dr. Dahl, before we get into the genetic testing aspect of the disease, could you give our audience a brief overview of PKD and the various types of PKD? It would be my pleasure. So as most of us know from taking care of patients, polycystic kidney disease is a disease in which there's growth and cyst development in the kidneys bilaterally. Um, this is a fairly common disease. It's the most common genetic form of kidney disease, affecting about one in 500 to one in 1,000 patients. And the predominant gene for autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, which is what most of us in adult nephrology see, is caused either by PKD1 or PKD2. So mutations in one of those genes account for about 90% of all ADPKD, and about another 9% have no mutation detected, either because of a technical problem of not being able to, to find the gene, or because there's another gene perhaps that's causing the same phenotype or same expression with a lot of cysts in enlarged kidneys. There are two other categories of disease that are important to know when you're considering ADPKD. One of them is autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease. This generally presents in children but can present in adults, uh, uh, particularly the milder forms, and it's caused by another gene, PKHD1. 
And then there are some autosomal recessive forms of cystic kidney disease. And these also generally are diagnosed in the, in the pediatric age group. And these are much less common than ADPKD. Thank you so much. So since today we'll be focusing on the autosomal dominant form of the disease, it would be great if you could really explain to our audience in very simple terms, what do we mean by an autosomal dominant trait? Because it's really been a while since most of us have taken a genetic class. So would really appreciate your insights. It's my pleasure. So there are two words here that are that define what the disease is. The first is autosomal. So this means it's not uh, uh, sex linked. It's not on the X or the Y chromosome, but it's on one of the other chromosomes. And then dominant meaning you just need a single copy of that gene for you to have the disease. So in this cartoon, what they're showing is the, the father has the affected gene and then each of his offspring has a one in two or 50% chance of getting that copy of that gene from him. And, uh, and you can see here about two of the four children have, uh, are also similarly affected. So it was um, you know, pointed out in the first slide that most of the mutations in PKD1 and PKD2 are uh, primarily responsible for the disease but it will be helpful for the audience to understand a little bit about the structure of the genes and um, what are the various types of mutations that have been identified? And are there any additional genes which when mutated cause ADPKD? 